Can an introvert become an extrovert? And do they want to? My name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, we're going to learn what Carl Jung had to say for introverts that wanted to become more extroverted and extroverts that want to be more introverted. First of all, it sounds like a paradox, but the more ourselves that we become, often the more of our opposite we become. And so what I found is that when an introvert is truly comfortable, they have no problem with sharing and opening up about themselves and connecting with other people. Similarly, when an extrovert is comfortable, they have no problem with going deep inside themselves and being alone with their thoughts and with getting to know who they really are on the inside. Now, why is that? Carl Jung, he had a really fascinating theory, and we're gonna talk more about that in today's video. Now, stay tuned to learn how you can develop to be more extroverted or how you can become more introverted and how you can conquer your shadow. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. So just as we can see introverts who are able to really open up about themselves and be themselves in social situations, we can see extroverts that are able to spend hours or days on their own working on novels or writing or developing music or creating things from inside themselves that they can later share with the outer world. This tendency of people to become the opposite version of themselves is fascinating. But why does it happen and how can we learn to really step into these traits in a healthy way? Carl Jung, he had a concept known as enantiodromia. And enantiodromia, that means that the greater the movement in a certain direction, the greater the opposite movement in the opposite direction. That can basically be explained as follows. When an introvert would like to become more extroverted, they might find themselves pushing themselves to be more outgoing, forcing themselves to talk more, forcing themselves to take more initiative, and putting themselves out in the world. However, the more an introvert tries to be extroverted, the more of a stronger and more intense pull they feel to return and to withdraw and to become more introverted. In essence, as you try to and push yourself to become more outgoing, you also find that your social batteries diminish. You become more tired, more annoyed and more restless and soon, eventually, you find yourself with a crash. You force yourself away from people, you stop answering the phone and you retreat to your own private corner or room, tired, exhausted and upset with yourself for failing in your goal of not being able to stay connected and to stay present. Changing yourself is hard work and the fact is most people fail and they fail for a simple reason and that's because they don't understand the law of enantiodromia. In essence, the more you try to be extroverted, the more a part of you is going to rise that is going to want you to fail at being extroverted. And in essence, so in trying to do something, you are creating your own resistance and you are making yourself fail. Do or do not, as Yoda said, there is no try. What uh, you really should be doing is instead of moving in the opposite direction. It might seem counterintuitive, but often the best way to become more extroverted is to become more introverted. What I find is that when an introvert is able to prioritize and set boundaries for themselves and to respect themselves and their own needs, they are going to recharge their batteries, gaining more energy and gaining more confidence. And with that confidence and with that energy, they're going to find that it's more easy to express themselves in the outer world. The more introverted you become, the more extroverted you become. And that is the law of opposites. Things have a tendency to turn on their own head and to become the opposite of themselves. And that means the more introverted you become, the more you create an unconscious pull towards the outer world. The inner becomes the outer and everything that you think and everything you discover about yourself in times of introspection, of solitude and uh, through alone time, you will want to share with the outer world. And so the more you step into yourself, the more you're going to discover that you're going to want to connect to the outer world. And that is why the most introverted people in the world are probably also some of the most extroverted and the people that are the best at guarding their own alone time are also the most healthy and the most open when engaging with the outer world. Carl Jung had another explanation to explain an antiodromia, and that was the concept of psychic energy. What he showed was that the more we try to do something or engage in a certain cognitive function or a personality trait, 
the more we create its opposite. And it's in the tension of these two opposites that we are and that we generate psychic energy. And psychic energy, he found, was a vital component in flow. It is in the pot potential and harmonious union of these two opposites that we are able to enter into a state of flow in which everything becomes easy. The world becomes one. We become attentive and present. We feel energy. We feel motivation. We feel confidence. And we feel self-control. Psychic energy, when mastered and when generated the right way, can either make or break your personality type. And that means psychic energy in the wrong direction is going to lead to a crash. And psychic energy, when harnessed and when mastered in the right way, can lead to great achievements and great accomplishments. When you are unable to understand the law of Nantiodromia, you're going to find yourself constantly moving against yourself. And you're going to find that you make decisions that are going to eventually fail and fall on their own ass. And in essence, that means the more you try to do something, recognize that your actions have consequences. Everything has a cost. Energy cannot be created. It can only be transformed. And so you have to find out how to transform your energy and how to drive healthy personal growth. This is the difference of what I call personal development or personal growth. Personal development is developing a persona that is outside of your control, a social or active or an extroverted a mask that you can wear for a few minutes but only at the great cost at the expense of the self at the expense of your personal boundaries and needs in fact many introverts that try to be outgoing experience a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress as they try to be something that they're not the force and the attempt to be something that you're not can be incredibly taxing on you as a person so what should you do as an introvert in order to become more outgoing the answer will surprise you. First, I want you to take more time to yourself to unwind. Second, I want you to allow yourself to slow down. I want you to stop rushing yourself. Personal growth does not happen instantly. It takes time. Third, allow yourself to be more calm and less warm in social situations. Don't pressure yourself to be more on than you want to be. Don't force yourself to be more warm or polite than what feels comfortable for you. If you can do this, you're going to find that your social battery is going to last longer. Fourth, create a harmonious and peaceful environment for yourself to thrive. And fifth, allow yourself to be more careful and methodical. Now, some of you, they might say that I do these things, but I'm still not experiencing that urge to go out into that world. And yeah, I have two answers to that. First, yeah, if you don't want to, you shouldn't have to. Second, one reason for this might be because of unresolved anxiety and stress. You might find that you're sometimes able to take time for yourself to set boundaries, but this is often too little and too late. This is often after you've already crashed and burnt yourself out too far. This is often filled and ridden by stress and anxiety. A lot of time people take alone time, but when they are alone, they still don't feel alone because they have internalized the voice of other inside their own head. You're constantly berating yourself, telling yourself, rushing yourself to be more outgoing, pressuring yourself to get back as soon as possible, and telling yourself you're a bad person or that you should feel guilty for not being out and being busy and doing something. These kind of things are not going to help you recharge and they're not going to help you rest. And in fact, they're gonna only slow down your recovery process. The guilt that you feel about yourself for being who you are is often counterproductive and it was going to create the self-reinforcing spiral. Ask yourself, why do I feel this guilt? What is wrong with being an introvert? Who is forcing me to be out and socializing with other people? Why do I feel a need to be constantly on? And who is telling me to always be productive and busy? Why do I feel a need to constantly present a social or warm persona to the outer world? Is there not something positive about taking your time on tasks and taking the time to meditate and to listen to your own inner word, voice? Can you not note this, that when you become more introverted, you become more secure? Now, last of all, there is something really fascinating about Carl Jung with this theory, and that is, could there be highly introverted individuals who have managed to become extremely outgoing? Do we know any highly extroverted individuals that are able to engage in frequent alone time and who are very comfortable by themselves? 
What I've found is that the more you manage to master the flow state and the more you learn about yourself and how you manifest psychic energy and will, the more difficult it will be to tell if you're an introvert or extrovert. Soon you'll find that the loop between the two, the times between being out and being by yourself are going to be so frequent and are going to be so in tune with one another, feeding and reinforcing each other, that it will be genuinely hard for you to tell what comes first. By learning about yourself and by honoring yourself, you will soon learn to become actualized and over time you'll start transcending the boundaries of yourself and embodying both of these traits in ways that feel natural and instinctive for you, switching back and forth between the two, often multiple times a day. So it's the goal to become an ambivert and to learn to balance both your dominant nature and your shadow with one another. Thank you so much for watching and learn more about these kind of concepts and personality type by subscribing to the channel and do check out patreon.com slash if you're interested in coaching or other tips.